Jeremy, let's go back to what we, we heard from Coach Ogeron there. Some notes here as, uh, as I move through before some bigger picture things. Uh, Anthony Bradford, who has been a, a nice little addition to the LSU offensive line in the last three or four games, is done for the rest of the season. Uh, Ed Ogeron said that he will not play again. The good news is that Cam Wire, the initial starter at left tackle after Jay Rosenthal left, looks like he will be back and ready to play uh, against Alabama. Chase and Hines also should be ready to go against Alabama. So you get Wire and Hines back, lose Bradford for the season. Cordell Flott is not going to practice this week, uh, but they expect, they will really hope to have him back for the Alabama game. Um, LSU will not put pads on this week. They will just go through some walkthroughs, clean some things up, kind of rest these guys who have been going at it for eight straight weeks plus camp. It's been uh, been quite a grind. But let's go to the offensive line first. Obviously, losing Bradford is a, a big bummer. Man, I, I talked about the injury bug. It's more like an injury grim reaper this year. It's like it, <laughs> you just can't keep anyone healthy. Um, just revolving door all year long. Just can't find any continuity with five guys you can trust to time and time again just to to build and to build as and to get better as. And we just keep losing guys week by week. And, and he was a guy that I saw in that Florida game really pushing people around, really gaining some confidence. A young guy who who probably went to get to play a lot this year and got thrust into that position like many guys have and start to get some confidence and now he's out for the year so just no, bad news and it just doesn't seem like this offensive line is going to get better anytime soon there are some narratives that pop up and it's very common and it's easy because when when lsu is in the position that they are five and five last year 500 team this year it's got to be somebody's fault somebody has screwed this up and so you get barbs thrown at the strength and conditioning coordinator. The LSU's hurt. Their strength and conditioning program doesn't work. And it's hard for me to argue with you when you say, well, look, Stingley and Ricks are hurt, and Andre Anthony's out for the season, and look, oh, man, Ollie Gay can't play, and now Anthony Bradford's done for the year, and oh, well, look, you look back, Major Burns can't play, and uh, you look at, uh, oh, everybody's hurt. It's It's got to be the strength and I'm going, wait a second. Nobody said the strength and conditioning staff sucked two years ago when we were beating everybody by 40 points and people weren't really getting hurt. It's the same guy. I, I doubt in, in the course of 20 months, he's just totally lost track of how to condition a football team. I think there's an element of this that's just terrible luck, and there's an element of this that is, well, look at where we are. This is probably a time to, to have some surgery. Like, it, it's just, I, I, I get, it just seems to me to be a lazy narrative that, you know, Tommy Moffitt, after 20 plus yeah. years at LSU, has lost touch, and now everybody's hurt because of him. I think that <laughs> argument just, doesn't make any sense in my head. No, football is a very, very physical sport. <laughs> it's a dangerous game, and you it's just really hard to come out alive injury-free, and that's why it's, it's take a, it takes a little bit of luck to win a championship, and, and that's what you have to have to get through a season with some of your best players being able to make it through, and that's just the quite opposite of what we've had all year. So to kind of put that on the strength and condition coach, I think it would be a little unfair, um, Just especially just looking at the stuff. I can see if every guy was pulling up with hamstrings and growing injuries and things of that nature, but – these are, you know, a lot of like broken bones and surgeries guys have having to have and guys are missing the entire season. So I don't really think you can point to a strength and conditioning staff when injuries like that are happening. It's just an unfortunate, an unfortunate year we've been having with guys just really just getting unlucky with injuries. So I'm looking at the Bayou Ford chat and we encourage your, your interaction. And so Stephen Miller says, OK, well, what's the issue, Hunt? Just misfortune, bad luck. I think some of it is. I think Eli Ricks having a bum shoulder is just something he showed up to Baton Rouge with, and it finally got to the point that he couldn't play anymore. I think Derek Stingley breaking his foot is bad luck at practice. I don't think that's. I think that's bad luck. Um, you know, offensive linemen that weigh 365 pounds might get hurt bashing around in there in a physical game after playing eight eight weeks straight. You want to tell me that Anthony Bradford should weigh 20 pounds less? Well, I you know I, I can't totally disagree with that, but it is. It is what it is. I think that, you know, Cordell Flott getting hurt playing out there is not good luck. I just I don't think that they're just so grossly under under trained and under prepared that they're getting hurt. I mean, I, tell me what you think, Stephen Miller, in the chat. I'm all ears. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I guess you can blame Mafia for uh for Miles Brennan as well. <laughs> that off season yeah. thing. It's just Yeah, it's just, broke his arm. I mean, <laughs> it's just like got, guys, guys you really need it just unfortunately just got hurt. For whatever reason, I don't think you can point. I think when you when you see guys who, who are getting, like I said, soft tissue stuff, you know, hamstring stuff in there, that's stuff that the strength and conditioning staff can do to avoid. But 
that's not been the case. These are these are just unfortunate injuries that have happened, and it's happened in the year where you got two coordinators out there who who really don't have the depth that you would love to have to to really do the things that they want to do. So it's just unfortunate all around. That's why you see the the coaching situation like we see it now. And and I get um, I lost track of who put it in there. Let me see. Okay, music said Hunt. They look slow and weak. Look, I, I'll grant you that LSU doesn't look like a very good football team the majority of the time they're out there. I, I, I'll grant you that. They didn't look that slow or that weak against Florida two weeks ago. I mean, Ty Davis Price is running downhill. They're throwing guys around. They didn't look slow or weak in that game. Now, against Ole Miss, they didn't get guys open. They played pretty poorly. Ole Miss kind of did whatever they wanted to. But again, I, I have a hard time believing that LSU was slow and weak this year because the strength and conditioning coordinator doesn't know how to how to make a strong physical team when he was the same guy who was here two years ago and the same guy who was here, I just, again, maybe I'm wrong. I'm not, I just, that doesn't line up to me. It just seems to me that, that, that LSU is not very good. And so we automatically have to start throwing stones that somebody's got to be responsible for this. I would lean other directions other than the strength and conditioning coordinator has made them slow, weak, and susceptible to injury. I just, that's tough for me. Yeah, and I think the, the best way for me to put it, you can look to every single position group on this team, from quarterback to running back to offensive line to receiver to Kayshawn Butte being yeah. out for the year to cornerback. Yeah, he doesn't look cor- slow or weak to me. He's <laughs> so, out for the year. Yeah, so every position group from the defensive line, your end guys are gone, uh, safeties, you're missing major burns, your Jay Ward's in and out of the lineup. It's just a, a complete team where every position group has been ravaged with injuries. So you go into some of these big SEC games without the depth that you thought you'd have going into the season, you're going to see the results that we've had. And parting with the coaching situation, it's just a recipe for a disaster, and that's kind of what we've seen. And, and Stephen Miller comes back and said, boom, there you go, Hunt. We are just not a good team at this point. That is, I, I, that is inarguable at this point. I mean, you're talking about a team that was down – Four touchdowns to Kentucky, down 31-7 to seven to Ole Miss, got shoved around by an average UCLA team. Um, yeah, it's, it's not a very good team right now. It, it's just not. We all looked at this roster, at, at some of the things that they had done and in in, in, in how they were recruited coming out of high school and what some of them had done at the college level and really believed that this is an LSU team that had every opportunity to go 10-2 and two or 9-3 and three in this year, and they're not that team. That's inarguable at this point. It's just for whatever reason, whether it's, whether it's coaching, whether it's evaluation and recruiting, whether it's uh, lack of depth, whether it's poor game planning, execution on the field during games, bad luck. I personally believe all of that it, in spaces and in, in, in parts has been part of this, but they're not very good at this point. Yeah, I don't think you can just put your finger on one thing and say, this is why the team yeah. has not been winning games. It's been a culmination of everything from the top down, from the play, and, and it's just really what you've seen all year, just no consistency and I think to me, uh, I think the thing that blows my mind the most is you see in, in a lot of these first halves, a lot of these first quarter, a lot of these games, you see drive, you see moments where you feel like this team could, could really have some potential and, and then it goes the exact opposite way in those very games and you kind of, the wheels start to fall off. So you just got to get this stuff figured out. It's going to be tough at this point, especially with the injuries you're dealing with, but you got to fight. It's a fighting Tigers LSU.